Okay, today I'm going to be seeing what happens to a Tesla coil in a vacuum chamber. So I'll turn it on as the pressure is getting sucked out this time so we can see how the sparks change with pressure. Okay, let's turn it on at atmospheric pressure now. Okay, so you can see those are the sparks coming off of it. So not very long sparks and it's not spinning because I have that stuff on it. Now let's turn on the vacuum. Okay, so we're at around 0.9 atmospheres. You can see the stringer's getting longer on it. 0.6 atmospheres. Look how long they're getting. Whoa, half an atmosphere. We're at around 0.3 atmospheres now. You can see the corona is getting more and more. The sparks are moving all around the wire. And this, now the stringers are starting to go away and it's just turning into kind of a corona glow. We're at around 0.2 atmospheres now, or 0.1 atmospheres. Yeah, now there's no more sparks and it's just that glow. The wire's just glowing now. That's crazy. Yeah, so now the electrons aren't able to make a full cascading spark, so you just get this corona glow. It's not a full discharge. Now let's let the air back in slowly. Okay, let's let the air back in. Okay, it's slowly going up now. So now the pressure's going up, back at 0.2 atmospheres, and we should see the stringers start to appear now. Oh, there they are. There's the full breakdown happening. They're blowing around in the wind. We're at around uh, 0.4 atmospheres now. Look at that. <laughs> so cool. Half an atmosphere. And now they're getting shorter and shorter. We're at around 0.8 atmospheres. And now the stringers are getting shorter. So now at full atmospheric pressure, they're not that long anymore. What we've seen here is actually pretty cool. And it's related to something called Passion's Law. Passion's law is an equation that shows you the breakdown voltage necessary as a function of pressure and the gap between the two electrodes. So you can see on this graph here, Passion's law shows us that at high pressures, it takes a lot of voltage to create a spark. But as you decrease that pressure, the voltage required to create a spark is lower and lower and lower. But then as you get to a lower and lower pressure, then the voltage required increases. So that's actually exactly what we saw in our experiment here. We saw that at higher pressures, normal atmospheric pressure, there were only tiny little sparks coming off of the wire here. But as we reduced the pressure, those sparks got bigger and bigger and bigger. So it was easier to have a spark at lower pressures. But then as the pressure decreased even more, the sparks just kind of went away and there were no more sparks at all, but only just a corona discharge around it. So we saw that there was kind of this minimum range where there was really big sparks and it wasn't at a full vacuum, but it was when there was just a little bit of pressure in there. And the reason this happens is pretty interesting. So when a spark happens, it happens because the voltage is enough so that it can start to rip an electron off of an atom. In order for a spark to occur, it has to rip electrons off of a lot of atoms. So the way that the spark starts is one atom has enough energy so that the electron can get ripped off of it. And as soon as that electron gets pulled off, it has to gain enough energy so that if it hits another atom, then it knocks the electron off that atom. And then that electron flies off and hits another atom and it creates this cascading effect that knocks a bunch of electrons off and you get a spark to occur. 
But in order for that to happen, the electron, once it gets ripped off of the initial atom, it has to travel enough distance to gain enough energy in this electric potential. It has to gain enough energy so that it gets enough speed to have enough energy to knock an electron off another atom. So if you have too much gas, too much pressure, those atoms are too close together so that an electron flies off one and it doesn't have enough energy to knock an electron off another atom so it doesn't create this cascade effect. So you don't get very big sparks or you have to have a higher voltage to create sparks across a specific length. But when you reduce that pressure, the atoms get far and farther apart on average. And so the electron can gain enough energy so that it gets enough speed to can knock electrons off and create this cascading effect that creates a spark. But if you reduce that pressure even more, then you get less and less atoms in there and it becomes less and less likely that you'll even have one atom that has enough energy to have its electron pulled off. And so it becomes less and less likely that you're even going to create this cascading effect because most likely that electron won't hit another atom in time and it doesn't create this cascading effect when the pressure is too low. So there's kind of this magic in between place where it can create really big sparks. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet and remember to hit the bell to be notified when my latest videos out and head over to theactionlab.com if you haven't checked out the new Action Lab subscription box where I send you quarterly experiments similar to the experiments that you see me do on my channel but I send it to your house and you can do it at home. It's pretty cool. So head over to theactionlab.com if you haven't seen it yet. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.